Okay, this is going to be a quick overview on how to use Yamaha's Y-POW calibration on a Yamaha RX A6A Aventa. So the first thing you're going to do is set up the microphone, which you'll see at the bottom of the screen here. This is set up on a table right in front of me. It comes with this nice little stand. So you want to set that up. You want to plug it into the unit. And then when you do that, you'll have an option here to hit start. So with the remote, I'll just select start. It gives you 10 seconds to get quiet because you are going to want to be quiet in the room while you're doing this. And if you are quiet, you can skip it. So I'm going to skip. Okay, now after that's done, it does give you the option to do a multi-point measurement. So you can take that microphone and you can move it around the room and you can put it basically in the different seating positions that you have. So you can get a better equalization based on every seating position. In my experience, I think this actually works best if you take it in one position in the middle of the room. I think you get a better EQ on all the speakers. And again, that's just, that's just my impression using this thing. So I'm gonna skip the multi-point measurement. Um, you can do many, you can do up to eight. I'm gonna go ahead and skip it. When you do that, it's gonna calculate the results. So it's, you see at the top there, it's calculating. And then you have the option to view the measurement results, save or cancel. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save this. And then after that, I'm going to take you into the web interface because there are a few things that we have to do after we get done with this calibration without with this um, with this process here of calibrating it. So I'm going to take you over to the web interface and we're going to take it from there. So what I'd like to do after WIPOW goes through its calibration with the microphone is I like to go into this this web setup. So the way you get here is you open up your web browser, you punch in the IP address for your device, forward slash setup. Hit enter, and this screen will appear here. There's a lot of things you can do here. Just generally, you can select different DSP modes. You can mess around with straight, surround AI. Um, all these, pretty much everything here is accessible with the remote and the settings built into the device and the on-screen display. I just think this is a little bit easier when I'm going through this. So the first thing I do is I go to speaker. And if you go down to configuration, this is where you'll see how Yamaha set all your speaker sizes and their crossover frequencies. So Yamaha, right out of the box, they're gonna set everything to large. And maybe it's because I have fairly large speakers. The smallest woofer that I have is six and a half in any given speaker center surrounds, um, but it sets it all to large. And for the most part, you're going to want to set these to small and you're going to want to set your crossovers to around 80 hertz. That's kind of a foolproof way of going about this and having a pretty good setup. My front speakers are Martin, Lotion, Martin Logan, excuse me, 60 XT speakers. They are, uh, they're big. They have eight inch woofers in them. They can dig pretty deep. So I am going to leave these as large speakers. I'm also driving them with a Parasound 2250 V2 amp. So I have plenty of power, plenty of good power going to those speakers. So I don't mind running these full size. I think to me it sounds best. And when I listen to two channel audio, I also like just the, the, the pure sound coming out of the speakers without the subwoofer. 
Um, so that's another thing to note here that is that if you set this to large, you won't have any bass coming out of the subs when you listen to channel audio. The only way to get that in the Yamaha receiver is to turn on the extra bass mode, which you could do through the on-screen display. Now, the other speakers that I have, I only have a 5.1 setup. Um, I have a center, it's a Polk LSIM 706C. It's a big speaker, it could dig down to about 50 Hertz. Um, so I like to set this at small, and then I'll set the crossover at 60. Now it sounds pretty much the same between 60 and 80. I think I get, I notice a little bit more low frequency out of this or out of the, uh, the center and the surrounds both when I set them to small and I set them to 60 Hertz. So this is how I have mine set up. Again, if you don't know much about your speakers, if you want really kind of a safe way of doing this, set everything to small, set all your crossover points to 80 Hertz and you'll have a pretty good layout. The next thing I like to do is I like to check the actual distance. So for whatever reason, even though the distance to my surround left and my surround right is the same to the microphone during calibration, um, it sets the right one up as being further away. Now, there's definitely some room effect here, but for me, I've gotten the best results by actually measuring how far I sit from each individual speaker and just manually inputting the distance here for each of the five speakers that I have. One thing I do like to let the receiver do is to calibrate the distance from the subwoofer to the seating position. The reason is, is I have a remote SVS sound path wireless transmitter and receiver on my sub and that inherently has some delay in it so what this thing does the the, the receiver is smart enough to notice pick up the delay and it puts the speaker out like it's 35 feet away which essentially gives it a signal before the rest of the speakers so by the time it, it goes through that delay through the wireless transmission all the sounds hit me at the same time and that's really what's most important here and the last thing I like to play with manually, and again, you could just leave it however it gets set up, is I do like to fool around with the levels a little bit just to make sure that my left, right, center, and surrounds are at a level that I like them. Some of this is personal preference, and honestly, how it sets it up out of the box, it's pretty darn good. Uh, you do get some PEQ options, equalizer options, natural, fat, flat. Um, I like natural, flat's a little bit brighter. Front, what front actually does is it'll EQ the rest of your speakers to match your fronts. So your fronts are going to be flat, like you see here, and the centers are going to be EQ'd to match your front speakers. If you like the way your fronts sound, if they're a different speaker than the rest of your speakers, you know, play around with this, figure out personally what works best for you. And there's also a manual feature. So in manual, you can adjust each one of these EQ bands and frequencies, um, and you can adjust the gain individually to put the speaker and set it up how you like it. Uh, a little more advanced. Um, I play with this a little bit, but honestly, Yamaha and this Aventa RX A68 does a very good job um, in natural or flat of setting up the speakers pretty well. So this is where I do most of my adjustments. And again, this is just kind of a quick overview. I've played around with this thing a lot. This is really what, what sounds best to me. Uh, the other thing I would recommend, which is very helpful, is to back up your settings. So from time, time to time, I like to get back into this and I start playing around with settings. Sometimes I get myself in a position where I can't get back to where I want to be. So if you get something that you're happy with, it's always a good idea to back this thing up. Uh, you can store the file locally on your computer, and you can always restore it back from that file. So no matter what settings you play with, you can come in here and you can restore it just the way back, just back to the way it was before, which I think is very helpful. So that's uh, just a real quick overview of how I go about calibrating my system. I think it sounds very good. Uh, I'm very happy with the receiver. It's only powering three speakers right now. And like I said, I have a, a Parasound amplifier that powers the front too. And it has more than enough to power three speakers to cinematic levels and sound fantastic. Um, for reference, my subwoofer is an SVS SB4000. I like the sealed sub sound um, just to give you guys an idea of, of what, what kind of equipment I'm working with over here. So thanks for listening. If you have any questions, just feel free to drop them in the comment section and I will do my best to respond. 
So enjoy and good luck out there.